All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We have just had terrible weather here this past September. It's now finally October. The sun's shining here in the Philadelphia area. It's actually dry. It's going to be a nice, actual sunny day. And I would argue September has probably been the worst September I've ever been a part of. We've had the worst fig weather you can think of. And a lot of my figs are spoiling, fermenting, rotting on the trees. We've had a lot of beetles pest pressure from wasps and um, fruit flies. It's just uh, really heartbreaking. We put all this work in and a lot of the figs just turn to mush. But there are ways around this and that's what I wanted to discuss in this video is that if you're in this humid location, you're growing somewhere where it rains a lot, what you have to do is try to avoid that rain because the rain is really what's destroying them. Now the colder weather definitely makes them ripen longer and have to hang on the tree longer. So if they're on the trees longer, the rain's going to come in and just totally destroy them. And that's what happens. The rain hits the side of the fig, the skin, and because the, the figs are soft flesh fruits, they absorb that water right into their skin, and lowers the sugar content, lowers the bricks, and then they just start rotting and fermenting and molding. So one way around it is actually just to avoid the rain completely. Well, how do you do that, Ross? Well, first off, Clearly, you could get yourself a greenhouse. And that was a huge advantage I had this year. A lot of the potted trees you see behind me were in the greenhouse, and they were able to get a head start. And they ripened actually almost their entire crop before the rain came in, before September, which was really nice, but not everyone has that. So the other option, I would argue, is that we have to choose specific varieties, like the ones here in my hand. One is called Martinenka Blanca, which is a new one to me. It's been one of my favorites, discussed a lot recently on my blog. This fig has an incredible nice uh, flavor, texture, it's amazing. And uh, the nice part about it is that it actually tastes really good under ripe. The same thing with this other variety here in my hand. This is called Adriatic or White Adriatic. It was a commercial fig grown years ago in California. And uh, these two varieties, along with a number of others I'm going to mention, taste actually pretty good when picked under ripe. Now, you guys probably know that I like my figs as ripe as possible. And of course, even these, if they're going to be picked at 50 or 60% ripeness, like a commercial fig grown in California, shipped across the country, eh, most of the time they're not going to taste that good. But believe it or not, these here, and a number of the other varieties actually taste pretty decent at 50 or 60% ripe. So that's one way to avoid it. We pick them before the rain, even when they're underripe, and they still taste good. So varieties here like Martinenka Blanca, I'll put all these in the description. You can find also the names on my blog, figboss.com. We have Adriatic or White Adriatic. There's also Dotato, Cadota, Peter's Honey. They're all synonyms. There's also Italian 258, people would argue for. And there's a new one here right next to me. I don't have any ripening at this current moment. We have a few left on the tree. This is called Mala Vermella. I've been really impressed with it and they taste really good even under ripe. Now the other option is the same thing. We have to pick them before the rain, but the other criteria that we can find in a variety that is hardwired in their genetics is actually they'll have a shorter hang time, meaning they're going to ripen quicker on the tree. So they're going to get from 0% ripe to 100% ripe faster. Every variety has a different amount of days it takes. And it really depends on the, the heat. The heat units in the air, the heat units in the soil really makes a big difference as to how fast our figs ripen. And so in the fall, when it gets really cold, and also typically when it's very rainy, we can really struggle with actually having warm enough temperatures. So we can choose instead varieties that ripen faster. And so instead of picking them at 50 to 60% ripeness, we pick them at 80 or 90% ripeness before the rain comes in. And they taste great at that point. So varieties like behind me or behind you guys, Little Ruby as an example, Campaneri, Ferdino del Nord, uh, these are all really, really great varieties I've discussed also on my blog that can enable us here in these humid and terrible fig growing conditions to actually get high quality figs. So even though we've had such a terrible September and a lot of you guys are probably complaining about it, all is not lost. There's a lot of hope. 
I thank you guys here for watching this one. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, support what we're doing here in the effort of trying to encourage you guys to grow these very special figs. We'll see you soon. Thanks again.